Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. Uh, for over nine months, we reported to you what was happening at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond issuance. Uh, we also uh, brought you details of what happened in our country after the bond scams of 2015 February and 2016 March. We uh, reported to you how perpetual treasuries limited amassed massive wealth uh, to the tune of 6.8 billion rupees um, in the quarter when you take a look at April 2016 and September 2016. What has happened to perpetual treasuries profits now? From the quarter starting from April 2017 to September 2017, the profits of Perpetual Treasuries Private Limited has gone down. The profit value stands at 316 million at the moment. This is from April 2017 to September 2017. We also have to keep in mind that this is the time frame where the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond issuance operated and uh, carried out their inquiries and examinations into what happened at these two bond scams. Now, this is a reduction of 6,000. 484 million rupees or 6.4 billion rupee, rupees if you approximately calculate the value. Um, you may ask me why this has happened, Arundhati. This happened because the central bank uh, carried out an internal investigation into the bond scam uh, back in the day and they decided to ban perpetual treasuries from carrying out primary dealings or, or operating as a primary dealer. So this also resulted in uh, these uh, profits to be taken away from the perpetual treasuries uh, limited to this extent now several people several experts have been talking about the profits that have been amassed by this company there were various allegations raised as the at the company and uh, even the former governor of the central bank we'll have a listen to what wasanta samara singha the convener of the voice against corruption had to say about this the profits for six months dropped from 6,500 million because this is all the money that they earned by robbing the central bank and the EPF. The profits of perpetual treasuries for the first six months of 2017 reduced to 316 million. Profits during the same time a year ago were 6,815 million. This clearly shows that of the 12 billion, around 11 billion of it are still in various bank accounts. The accounts of perpetual treasury should be checked and the government should take steps to regain the money that was stolen back to the treasury. This is the money that belongs to the people. This was the perpetual magic show conducted by a father and his son-in-law. They were protected by the United National Party and this government. Who benefited and who received kickbacks has been clearly revealed. <laughs> As Mr. Vasant Samarasinghe said, the retained profits of Perpetual Treasuries Limited stands at a staggering 10 billion rupees. While uh, people in one corner of our country are enjoying luxuries to this tune, there are various other people living across the country who are battered by adverse weather, high costs of living. This is the common uh, case in uh, almost all the people living in our country. If you take a look at the people living in the Kiral Patia area, Track 7, Track 3 villages and even Kukul Katwa villages in Mahavilachya. This is just one example for you as to how people in our country, our own brothers and sisters are living amongst hardships, uh, working day and night to get through to the other day so that they can feed their children and their families. This is what they have uh, going daily. The usually lush green lands of Vilakshe in Nanradhubri district are barren today due to lack of rainfall. Villagers in the area told News First that they travel many miles each day to find drinking water. They also lamented that they have not been able to farm for three consecutive seasons due to the lack of rainfall. These are lands which were cultivated on by our parents and forefathers, but today we don't have water, we don't have anything, everything is gone to waste. This is a fate that has befallen the tank located in the midst of the village. November is the time when the monsoons end. By this time, this tank should be overflowing. Look at it. Is there any water in this tank? While bearing the brunt of the damage inflicted by the drought, these families are also facing a food shortage. They note that it is with great difficulty they find food to feed their children. We live amidst many hardships. We also have to deal with the issue of wild elephants. We cannot engage in farming activities. We never receive any form of relief either. We have been unable to farm for four seasons. We don't have a proper income. This is how we live. It seems like even the gods are turning their gaze away from us. 
dan pikir bala. Wei batu ne, gas kolam meruna goi tam batkeran vidiak ne. Bond batu ne dikepa apa pisali orang tegar non. Atte nama mata melau kita me behitin sulin vidi nama vidi nama mama mata indebe mata badikin indebe me cuti daru badikin nino. Mata re, ekai dekai, pan dera tunai hati re kalan ti kerja kila hati nama eh melau kita. Jemal kan ya nama eh daru re hati si baru akne me me kata satya kata apa. Atte nama Mai ke lagi hilang lagi ke heli, kebal kan lagi hilang mana kan dia hilang ya hilang mana kan dia tu. Eka awam pasti sama mai ke mewah lana kan cuma tu netu ya ni. Eka kene dah kalau papu pernah mana ke lagi senang itu orang futu futu ke kiman kiman tu lagi ni. Tapi mana kan tuan tuan potak lian awam ke lian tu pulu hangai itu orang apa itu tiada pras nak ada lu. The people are puzzled as to why the attention of the officials are not directed towards their issues. With tearful eyes, they await for a brighter tomorrow. Till this day, none of the officials have come to this area. They have not given us anything. All I have to say to the leaders are open your eyes and look at the issues that we are facing. Don't work only for the election. News First brought you details of a situation where there is a once again misappropriation when providing tablet computers to school students. This was a promise by this good governance government when they came into power. They said that all uh, school students will have their own uh, tablet computer when they are doing advanced level examinations. Now, while we are not uh, obstructing these development projects carried out by the people why we say it is the correct thing to do uh, to get these uh, children uh, the students of our country the access to ICTA the access to information communication technology if someone is trying to line their pockets through these uh, projects through these uh, development projects that are being carried out then the outcome of the project will be of no use. Uh, so we have an Action TV expose, a follow-up of a story that we have been uh, closely covering here at News First. Let's take a look at Action TV. A proposal was made to provide tabs for advanced level students through the 2016 budget. During the 2018 budget speech, Minister of Finance Mangala Samaravira stated that this promise has been fulfilled. However, this debate occurred on the same subject when the expenditure head of the Ministry of Education was being discussed. Where are the tabs? None of the students have received the tabs as yet. When do you expect to give these tabs? Oh. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I need to make a clarification. The procurement process is being finalized. We will be distributing branded iPads early next year. This will be given to A-level students, A-level teachers and principals. There is no doubt about it. We have a responsibility to do what we are doing the right way. That is why there was a delay in getting this done. <laughs> the minister stating that iPads will be distributed is also an issue because the minister might not be aware that what he referred to is a brand name of a certain device. Another issue is that the government is preparing to purchase 200,000 tabs while the tender notice that they had published clearly sets the requirement at 195,148. On the 29th of last month, we revealed an even more startling issue, this time regarding the manner in which the supplies of these tabs was selected by the Ministry of Education. Other suppliers who opposed this selection were granted an opportunity to go before the Cabinet Procurement's Appeals Committee on the 16th of this month. However, this three-member appeal committee has thrown into doubt the entire issue. The fact that the parties were not allowed to be represented by a lawyer during this inquiry creates further doubt. The statement made by the Minister in Parliament reveals that the cost incurred by the government in procuring these tabs will be in excess of 6.89 billion rupees. This procurement process is one where the requirements of the state were amended at the last minute so that it provided an unfair advantage to one supplier. The loss that the state will incur due to this transaction will be in excess of 2.7 billion rupees. The amount of foreign exchange that will be leaving the country as a result of this transaction will be over 22 million US dollars. <laughs> Thank you.
we spoke about how people living in our own country and villages in our own country are suffering due to the lack of fundamental basic needs uh, the politicians the public representatives that we appoint they seem to be clustered uh, with the local government elections they seem to be focused on having the local government elections and the people the problems of the people have been forgotten yes we agree that the people should have a right to exercise their franchise the people should have a right to vote in their public representatives but at this moment do these public representatives go into these places of power and forget the people forget what they came for and forget their responsibilities that what is happening in our country at present if you take a look at the examples that we've shown some people are trying to line their pockets fill their pockets by using development projects brought in by the government some people are enjoying the money that should be for the people so this is what is happening in our country but is this the correct path to trod on is this the correct path to travel on our questions that Uh, need answers finally while we agree that people should have the right to exercise their franchise has this government got their priorities in place